This week on The Social Escape, YouTube jumps in on that time management trend, Instagram tests college community groups, and two months since its introduction, is IGTV even good? All that and more. It's The Social Escape. What's up guys, I'm Alex Legos, AKA yo host in this bitch. We got a quick one today, so let's just get it over with. Remember those time management tools that uh, Facebook and Instagram rolled out? Well, YouTube is now jumping on the bandwagon. Giving users the ability to view the amount of time they have spent watching videos on the app for today, yesterday, and the last seven days, which adds up to a week. In addition, you can also set the app to remind you to take a break after a certain amount of time, and you can also set it to silence notifications, just like you can on Facebook and Instagram. Again. This is just to make us think that they care about us, which they don't. These big organizations' goal is to make sure that we're spending as much time in their apps as possible. That said, they are most likely counting on the fact that we're not going to use these features, but I'm an unbiased reporter, so this is all fine and dandy. Moving on. Instagram is testing college community groups. This is actually kind of cool. What does this mean? I thought you'd never ask. Instagram will basically prompt users with a notification that is asking you to join a college community to connect with others other students. That's going to look like this. If you opt in, you'll get your school name as well as your graduation year added to your profile, and you'll also be given access to a class-based list of other students who have opted into the community. Weirdly enough, Instagram isn't verifying students by an EDU email address, as I originally assumed that they would, but instead they're going to be using user-shared public info, such as college attended, accounts that user follows, and other connections that they may have, which is completely vague and leaves us guessing. But that seems legit. These communities are supposed to be for current students only, but allegedly a CNBC reporter was able to join a group at their alma mater, even though they are very much graduated. And that, my friends, is why Instagram calls it a testing phase. Moving on. Lastly, it has been two months since Instagram blessed us with that creator-friendly, vertical-only, long-form content platform called IGTV. So where are we at? Are people using it? Is it being used correctly? What are we doing? We're kind of all up in the air. We don't know what's happening, but a TechCrunch report recently looked into the issue, and here's what they found. TechCrunch focused on Instagram's featured IGTV personalities to see if the cream of the crop were really getting the most out of this feature. Because if they're not winning, who really can be? Shockingly, after analyzing six of these IG partnered creators, they found that their IGTV videos are actually getting an average of seven times less views than normally posted videos. Okay, so maybe that's just one stat. Let's ignore it. What else? Well, the IGTV standalone app has seen a 94% decrease in downloads since it peaked in the App Store at number 25 overall. Which means basically anybody who was gonna download IGTV has already downloaded IGTV. TV. But I, I guess this isn't super important because, take me for example, I never downloaded IGTV and I'm putting content on it on a weekly basis. And the reason I never downloaded the app in the first place is because why would I have an Instagram and an IGTV app when my IGTV is accessible in my Instagram app? That just makes no sense. So I don't put much stock in the download numbers because if you have Instagram, you have IGTV as long as you've updated your app. So let's write that stat off too. Let's just ignore it. Okay, fine. So 0 for 2. What else? Well, Casey Neistat says says that he doesn't think IGTV is gonna work because of the extremely low viewership and the fact that you can't monetize videos. <sighs> I don't know guys, like I said, I think Instagram needs IGTV to work, which means that they're gonna be pushing accounts that are creating good content specifically for the platform. In addition, I told you this a couple of weeks ago. The new IGTV carousel, I am psyched to see this come out. Instagram is working on a carousel setup just like they have with Instagram stories. So what that'll look like is like this, and basically it just shows, you know, you have your stories up top, you have your feed down below, but then sandwiched right in between is an IGTV carousel that you can go ahead and scroll through. You can see all the episodes, you can browse them by thumbnail instead of having to flip through each individual channel and playing them aloud automatically. And if that carousel feature rolls out, I think it changes everything simply for the ease of access. It puts it right in front of us. It's gonna be easier to find IGTV content than it is right now. Remember, I originally predicted that IGTV would not be the YouTube killer that people thought it was, but let's also remember that YouTube has a 13 year head start on IGTV and historically Mark Zuckerberg does not like to lose. 
just ask Snapchat. If you wanna hear my original thoughts on IGTV, go ahead and check that video out. And let me know if you're watching IGTV. I'm curious how you guys are using it. Obviously, you may be watching this video on IGTV. You may be watching this on YouTube. You may be watching this on Facebook. I'm curious to see where you guys are consuming this at. And I also know a lot of people haven't even updated their apps since IGTV was launched, so you don't even know what that is. Anyways, let's do a post of the week. This week, our post of the week goes to the New York Public Library. I know. A library. If you polled most people, I think most people would probably tell you that libraries are dead. Don't ask me where I got those numbers from, but that's the facts. But the New York Library has something to say about that. Here's what it is. The NYPL is giving users a new way to consume classic novels. Starting with Alice in Wonderland, they're posting page by page the entire book on their story. This is truly amazing. And sure, all they're doing is taking Kindle's approach and putting it on their story and then saving it to a highlight so users can go back and pick up where they left off, but to my knowledge, and I'm very in touch with the library community as you all know, this has never been done before. Overall, an awesome way to make libraries relevant again, especially in a world where most kids think paper is just what you use when you're done in the bathroom. So well done, New York Public Library. Very proud of you. That's all for this week, guys. Be sure to follow, subscribe, like, comment, and DM me if you want to talk about social media. I'm here for you.